Well, I had to sleep on it. I had to actually think about uh, uh, the game yesterday where TFC loses 4-1 uh, to the New York Red Bulls to try and figure out exactly how I was going to approach things today. Uh, obviously, a very, very hard loss yesterday to the New York Red Bulls uh, at BMO Field, the first loss since last year. And you all know by now how it all went down. Uh, I've got a few observations uh, uh, post-game to try to put this entire uh, loss into context. I'm not really going to go through uh, the play-by-play. -play. You were either there or you watched the game or you've seen the highlights, so you actually know how it went down. Uh, looks like New York is pretty well solidified now. It's a uh, playoff place. They may even, uh, are, are now they're pretty close to Columbus. They may be, uh, may be able, I should say, to actually finish first uh, in the conference as well. Uh, they're a very good team. And uh, I think they've made some very, very shrewd uh, uh, acquisitions, and I'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, TFC has four home games left in Major League Soccer. Columbus is going to be the last one. Uh, we've got Real Salt Lake next week. Uh, we've got San Jose. Those are all teams uh, that we're chasing. Uh, and we've got D.C. United coming up as well, uh, I think, in October. So uh, the home record uh, blemish yesterday is still really strong. Six wins, one loss, and four draws is uh, uh, one of the absolute best records. I think the second best record at home uh, in Major League Soccer, but the home games are just taking away. So uh, securing a playoff berth based on home form is going to be really difficult. It's all going to come down to can Precky and can the 25 players on that roster right now find a way to deal with this. One win, one draw, seven defeats away uh, from BMO Field this year with six games to go and some winnable games to come as well. Uh, DC away, Shivas away, uh, Seattle away are three that come to mind that I think Toronto, just off the top of my head, I can't remember the other three. Those are three games I think the TFC has got a real good chance uh, at actually getting three points from uh, based on matchups and based on the quality uh, quality of the club. Can they do it and can they salvage the playoffs? It's possible. But it's going to come down to that. The bottom line is that the playoffs are not out of the question yet. Far from it. I know there's a lot of naysayers and doomsayers out there. But it's too early uh, to write them off just yet. And again, it's all going to come down to the road form. Uh, it's also going to come down to the play of a lot of critical players. Uh, like D. Rosario, who broke his duck yesterday. Uh, hasn't scored a goal since the end of May. Uh, good to see him score a nice goal from a, a good effort from O'Brien White late in the early, I should say, in the second half yesterday. Uh, speaking of yesterday, Julian de Guzman, I think, was really missed yesterday. And I know that he's a lightning rod. I know that he gets a lot of stick from a lot of people in regards to the fact that, hey, he's making $1.7 million. He's driving around town in a uh, uh, an orange Lamborghini, and that's true, by the way. Uh, uh, and he's a defensive midfielder making $1.7 million a year. But hey, how different would that game would have been yesterday if, if uh, de Guzman was in that midfield distributing the ball? Uh, I think the distribution from our midfield replacements yesterday was very poor. Uh, and I think perhaps uh, if, if, if there were two things that could have maybe changed the result yesterday, I think it would have been the presence of de Guzman in the midfield to break up that linking play, especially from Lynn Pear, who was fabulous uh, going up to Angel and, uh, and Henri up top yesterday. Uh, I think that might have made a significant difference in the game. That, of course, and the old bugaboo of TFC, which is a lack of finishing. We hit a goal post in the first half. We actually uh, had some decent chances to put balls away that could have, could have meant TFC was up 2-0 in the first 20 minutes of that game yesterday. But, hey, it didn't work out that way. Uh, Mista, the Mista thing yesterday was pretty inexplicable as well. Uh, he started, of course, uh, uh, up top yesterday with O'Brien White and looked pretty good. Had some decent scoring chances in the first half. Uh, some people are criticizing his, uh, uh, his work rate. I'm willing, again, to give him, at least to an extent, the benefit of the doubt for now based on the fact that he's getting his fitness back. Uh, uh, but leaving at the half and being subbed off for Jacob Peterson... I really don't understand that. Uh, the Toronto Star uh, is reporting today that uh, it was an undisclosed injury. Uh, the, the score is saying that it was a tactical decision. Uh, and uh, the somewhat more uh, 
I wouldn't say controversial, but tabloid like Toronto Sun came out and said that it was because of a tiff between uh, Mista and uh, Coach Precky. Uh, either way, whatever it was, and I'm leaning more towards what uh, Christian Jack reported on the score, that it was more uh, uh, a tactical decision. Uh, Mista maybe was a little vexed that he was taken off, which is frankly what you want a professional player to do, which is to be pissed off and, 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 and to be vocal and fight for their time on the pitch. Uh, either way, TFC needs him and needs his production down the road uh, in both MLS and, of course, in the Champions League. The Red Bulls. Uh, Thierry Henry yesterday. I'm a big Arsenal fan, as you can tell by the shirt, which you've seen on this blog before. Uh, that was pretty exciting, personally, uh, to see Thierry Henry. I think he still has a ways to go with his, uh, uh, with his again, fitness and his uh, uh, game day sort of sense to come back to him. A uh, couple of times he looked a little rusty yesterday. A couple of times he looked really good. But uh, uh, again, I think right now, based on, on, on not the Henri signing per se, but the, the Rafael Marquez signing, if you saw the highlights, man, oh man, that was a highlight real goal that he scored. Uh, that's up there with one of the best that's ever been scored in that stadium. Uh, a 30-yard screamer that uh, Stefan Fry or any other goalie wouldn't have had any chance to actually stop. I think based on, on, on what I saw overall, and I'm not just talking the Galacticos, I'm not just talking Henri Angel, uh, and Marquez, I'm talking the overall club, I think right now that they're probably as close to a complete side uh, as there is in Major League Soccer. And when I say a complete side, I mean top to bottom, they've got depth uh, uh, that a lot of other teams in this league would actually envy. Uh, Carl Robinson is one of those one of those depth players. Uh, hardly gotten a look in for the Red Bulls this season. He's played games uh, uh, in the Cup. I think he's been injured as well. And I know uh, personally, uh, uh, he's got some health issues with his dad. Uh, I lost my dad last year, and uh, I know how difficult it is to uh, sort of concentrate on getting on with your life when you're worried about uh, somebody that you love very deeply. So, uh, uh, best wishes to Carl and to his uh, uh, and to his ailing dad over in Wales. Uh, Carl, of course, in my humble opinion, is an absolute class act, and 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 Marquez's goal was one of the best ever scored in that stadium. To his credit, and I think Carl Robinson's display in the 78th minute, when he scored that little flick-on goal with his head, uh, after Stefan Fry bobbled a ball in uh, for a goal, uh, uh, where Robinson not only did he not celebrate, but he actually tried to calm the New York Red Bull players that mobbed him down in the North End yesterday, uh, because he didn't want to uh, he didn't want to celebrate and disrespect the fans uh, uh, that loved him so much when he was here, and you can. Certainly count me in that list of people. Uh, uh, I think the ovation that uh, the people, particularly in the west end of the stadium, gave Carl when he came on yesterday uh, showed how classy Toronto fans can be as well. Uh, uh, and uh, the fact that we did that, I think, speaks wonders to uh, our, our maturity as a, uh, as a soccer market. <sighs> the playoffs are not out of the way. They're not... Uh, 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 out of grasp yet, but again, as I stated earlier, it's all going to come down to uh, how we actually do on the road, and that's going to be a real challenge. Uh, speaking of the road, we've got another big challenge on Tuesday uh, in Panama against uh, Arabe Unido, our second game uh, of six group games uh, in the CONCACAF Champions League. Uh, I watched the Real Salt Lake uh, Arabe Unido game on Wednesday. That was a day after uh, TFC's famous victory last week against Cruz Azul. Uh, and uh, uh, RSL won the game 2-1. Uh, Canadian referee uh, awarded them kind of a soft penalty in the 90th minute, uh, in injury time, I should say, and RSL won the game. Dodgy penalty, but they bloody well deserved the win because of the absolute disgraceful, disgraceful tactics uh, uh, and gamesmanship I saw on, uh, on display uh, from the Panamanian side. Uh, a lot of Canadians, again, fans of the Canadian national team, uh, will know the kind of gamesmanship that we often see in Central America. Dodgy refereeing, dodgy playing surfaces, and by the way, we're going to be playing on artificial turf on Tuesday. Whether it's, uh, you know, AstroTurf, whether it's field turf, I don't know, but it's going to be an artificial surface, not a real surface, on Tuesday. Uh, I think in the last 40 minutes of that game on Wednesday, uh, I think the stretcher came out seven or eight times to drag uh, uh, players off the pitch because... Uh, 
Panama was uh, the Panamanians were tied one all with RSL, and of course they wanted to keep their point and get out of there uh, uh, without. Uh, and they were down a man too, so they were trying to actually you know park the bus and do it. But the way that they did it was just absolutely disgraceful. I think seven or eight times, as I said a second ago, the stretcher came out, player would come off the pitch, they would jump right up off the pitch, you know, get the magic sponge, get the magic spray, and wait for the referee to put him back on the pitch. Absolutely disgraceful. TFC has to get a goal early. They have to get up. They have to keep their temper in check because uh, I, I really think it's going to be one of those prototypical, nasty little Central American ties that uh, Canadian fans are oh so familiar with. How uh, TFC keeps uh, uh, its temper in check is going to come down to how that result's going to work out. Uh, an away result would be a huge boost, especially considering... Uh, how emotionally tough that loss was yesterday. Uh, we're hearing rumblings of, 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 you know, issues in the dressing room, questioning uh, of coaching tactics, uh, uh, some some really really big gaffes, things like that that can really uh, in the game yesterday that can really deflate a club over the long term. Uh, but winners find a way to actually you know compartmentalize those things, not let the last game seep into the next game at least the negatives from the last game, to seep into the next game. It's all going to come down to uh, can TFC actually do that or not. Uh, remains to be seen. I think uh, a result, even a draw tomorrow, uh, uh, Tuesday uh, in Panama would go a long way towards sort of settling the nerves in that, uh, in that locker room uh, and maybe give TFC a leg up on getting uh, into the uh, knockout stages of the Champions League. You figure... RSL is going to get smoked uh, in Mexico City this week. Uh, if we can get a result against the Panamanians, uh, uh, that puts us uh, even a win. That probably gives us a fighting chance of finishing uh, after the second round of games uh, first in the group, and that's a, a really positive thing to take into the next few weeks. So the next video blog will be up on Tuesday night, of course, after the Arab Unido game. Uh, I'll be updating things throughout the week uh, as well. Uh, you guys have a great week, and uh, we'll see you on Tuesday on the blog. Cheers.